Wondering how to become a data analyst in 2023? You've come to the right place. I'm Jen and I've worked in the analytics space for over 15 years. I've worked in roles like data analyst, business analyst, in roles of data governance, and I've spent the majority of my career managing teams working within the data analyst space. I'm going to demystify for you how to become a data analyst in 2023. We're gonna go through four steps to become a data analyst, and these are going to be somewhat broad because the field of data analyst jobs is in itself really broad. There are so many different variations of what a data analyst looks like, depending on the industry you're in, the company you're in, the role you're in within a company. And so there's no just one way that a data analyst job description looks or one way of getting into these roles. Because of that, the first step of becoming a data analyst is figuring out what what exactly do you like about data analyst roles? And what kind of niche or specialty or focus do you want to have? I recommend starting with the focus area. Some people don't like the idea of starting with a focus area because they immediately feel like this is limiting their options. And to a degree it does. However, if you consider a data analyst that has a lot of knowledge in a very specific narrow set of tools and skills, or someone that has has a very broad knowledge, but doesn't know much in depth of any of those tools, which one do you think is going to be more qualified when they actually go to apply for a specific job and aren't just looking at the general profile of skills that they have? It's going to be that one that has more depth and a more narrow range. So defining what type of role that you're interested in is a good first step. Do you like the idea of data visualization where you might focus more on roles that use tools like Power BI and Tableau. Maybe you don't like to code at all, but you want to do more than a data visualization role where you're using a tool like Alteryx or some of the SaaS programs that are more interactive. They have more of a GUI interface for their users to work with. Or maybe you really like the idea of coding or you know you like to code, you've practiced those skills. Then you might be looking at jobs that use SQL or Python, depending on what your skill set is. The other type of data analyst role differentiation that you could look at is do you want to be in a specific industry or a specific specialty area? So when I talk about specialty areas, things like a specific subject matter, do you want to be a marketing data analyst, a healthcare data analyst? And within healthcare, do you want to be a clinical data analyst? Do you want to work as a data analyst in healthcare that functions more in some of the behind the scenes roles, the, the finance, the marketing, the sales team, Teams, the supply chain, where you're in the healthcare industry, but you're not specifically working on really healthcare related specifics. So we've gone through those. We've got supply chain data analysts, audit, audit data analysts. There are lots, many dozens, probably hundreds of different specialty areas that you could pick from. And it's important to start here because that also defines what your next step is. So the second step is once you have an idea or even as you're exploring what niche of data analyst you want to be in, you're going to start looking at job descriptions. I recommend this not because it saves me a step of telling you what to do, but because the jobs that are available in your area and the specialty you want to be in may be different than the ones that are available in my area. So in general, we can talk about some of the skills you want to build and we'll talk about those in a minute, but it's really helpful, especially if you know that you want to be in an office and you want to stay local Goal, you want to be in a specific industry, it's better to look at exactly what set of skills that those jobs are calling for rather than just relying on some more generic advice, which is a starting point, but it's not quite as specific to what you're trying to accomplish. Once you have an idea of that role and those skills, the third step is actually building those skills. So again, we're going to talk a little bit generically here, but if I was looking at general skills that a data analyst should have, they're going to need good math skills, specifically around statistics. Yes, you can get the software, the tool, whatnot to run these statistics for you. What is most important though is understanding what different statistics there are, which ones are good to apply in different cases. Because if you ask for a mean, median, and mode from a software, it's going to give it to you. 
but how do I know which one I want to use? If you don't understand the differences between those different types of statistics, you might pick the wrong one. And those can sometimes be very similar, but more often than not, you're going to find that they may lead you to different conclusions. So you want to make sure that you understand why you pick the statistic that you're choosing to work with. That's a really simple statistic, but there are many more broad statistical processes, statistical methods that you'll want to understand. You also want some sort of tool. So this goes back to you could pick one of those data viz tools as a standalone. Your options are going to be more narrow. Typically roles that only use these are going to be on the lower end of the salary scale, but they're also a good starting point to get into it. If you know that's something that you like, that you're comfortable with learning, the hurdle to learn them is also typically much smaller. You could build skills like I mentioned in a no code or low code tool. This could look like maybe Power BI, you're learning DAX, maybe you're learning Alteryx, you're learning some of the SaaS products. There are a lot of different no-code, low-code tools out there. If you want to learn how to code or you think that you might be interested, I would look at SQL as your starting point and then maybe consider Python depending on the complexity of the role. SQL is certainly going to be much faster for most people to learn than Python is. And these are going to be very generally used across roles. Other languages like R are also popular. SAS is a popular language. And what you'll tend to see is there, there seem to be some differences across industry. So you might see SAS used a little more often in healthcare and the financial industry because of some of the rigors of different government requirements, the nature of open source software. Sometimes people are a little bit more reluctant to use, uh, at least for certain processes. But what you'll find is very common is different companies, depending on what they're working on, will have people using a variety of these tools in different roles. So you might find a company that depending on whether you're a sales data analyst or a marketing data analyst or a financial data analyst, you might be using SQL for some of it, Python for some of it, R for some of it, Tableau or Power BI or, or maybe both. So all of this variety is why it's also important to understand for the roles you're interested in, what they require. Require. I'll drop some resources down in the video description for learning some of these different skills. Once you've built some skills, the next step is to practice them. It's fantastic if you've taken a course or you've built a certain skill set. How do I know that you actually know how to use it? If I'm hiring you, if I'm interviewing you, considering you for the role, how should I know that you can take those skills that you learned in a class and apply them? And this is where projects can be very useful. The projects for data analysts typically are more more important to be able to speak about than they are to be able to show. If you think about it, I have a background working as a data analyst. I am never going to go into an interview with a company and show off a project I've done for a previous employer or a previous client. That is just completely, uh, generally not an ethical thing to do. However, I may speak about those in a general sense without identifying the client with leaving some of the specifics out where I talk about what I was trying to accomplish. I talk about the methodology I used to get there and I talk about what my outcome is. This is how you should think about data analyst projects. If you want me to cover any of this in more detail, leave a comment below the video so I know that you're interested in hearing more about any of these specific topics I've covered. So I think this four is turning into five because the, the last thing I would say is now it's time to, to get some more experience either in a job, applying for um, an entry level job, maybe utilizing more of these analytic skills in your day to day job, if that's an option, being able to analyze more information that way. For some people, it looks like an internship or volunteer experience. Getting that initial foot in the door, taking the first steps can look very different from person to person and role to role, depending on what background you're coming from. And remember, there's always going to be more that you feel like you could learn. And if you don't feel like there's more that you could learn, then you're probably a bit overconfident in your skill set. I say that as someone who knows that I still have plenty of different tools out there that I can learn, even though I've been doing this for 15 years. Does that mean I'm going to go learn every single tool out there? No, that doesn't make a lot of sense for me to do. But 
it means that I am constantly learning new skills. I'm constantly identifying different areas that I could improve on. That's the part of any professional growth in a job. So you're never going to be the absolute expert in every single area, but you'll be at a point where you can start working in the field and continue to grow your skills. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one help with getting into a data analyst job or looking for an ongoing mentorship, check out the video description where I'll link to opportunities to work with me as your mentor. Thank you so much for watching.